So I'm very happy that um, now we are, we are not uh, continuing with the fireside chat. We are continuing with a keynote. Um, uh, and Lisa is going to give a keynote. And Lisa has, Lisa has uh, written a book, or Lisa is co-founder of the Folk Days, um, a social fashion label. And she has written a book um, called Starting a Revolution, What We Can Learn from Female Entrepreneurs. Um, diversity is a big... Uh, is a big uh, theme, and we uh, are totally underrepresented with female entrepreneurs, and I think we can learn a lot from them. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating book. Uh, Lisa is um, self-described also an activist, and I would say a little bit a rebel as well. And um, uh, in our realm, we would also call her a pirate. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely happy and excited to hear from Lisa now, um, a keynote with a Q&A afterwards. Um, uh, please ask or type all your, all, all your questions into Slido and I will, uh, I will moderate the Q&A. Um, Lisa Jaspers from Folk Days. Hi everybody, um, I am Lisa and I'm really happy to be here. And I prepared a little input for you guys, and I'm uh, excited to then, after my little input, talk to you, and maybe we'll have a little bit of a discussion about what I'm bringing to the table today. Manuel, thank you so much for the um, for the introduction. Um, as you've mentioned, I um, I started a business about eight years ago. I started Folk Days, a fair fashion label that um, works with craftspeople from around the world, um, especially the global south, and we are producing uh, beautiful products that we sell online. And um, today I'm really excited to talk about a subject that's very close to my heart, which is um, why it is so important to learn to lead yourself before you lead others. And um, I would like to take you a little bit on my own journey in order to show what that meant for me. And as I said before, I hope we'll have some um, discussions later on. So um, when I started off my own business, um, I had actually worked as an employee before and I had bosses um, that were not especially terrible, but also not super great. So when I started Folk Days, I was very kind of excited and ambitious to um, create a company where I um, wanted to have a business culture that felt really kind of holistic, where I could feel like myself, where I would have fun, where all my employees would have fun and where I would be the best version of a boss I could be. And I guess I was a bit naive because I thought, you know, I'm nice and I'm empathic. So how hard can it be to be a good boss? So I started working and I, um, and you know, everything went along and we were successful. We grew, I started having my first employees and um, after two or three years in, um, I noticed again and again that I got to a point where I just had the feeling that there was something wrong with my, with the business culture at Folk Days and where I had the feeling that not only um, I didn't really enjoy working at Folk Days, but most of my employees didn't either. And I was very, um, very unhappy and very lost at that moment. Um, Luckily, a good friend of mine, Naomi Ryland, who I wrote the business book with, um, she also had founded a company um, and she also actually got to a very similar point as me, where we were both having a lot of discussions um, how we could become a boss that we really wanted to be. And um, as you do as an entrepreneur, what if you don't know what to do, you talk to other entrepreneurs um, and try to get advice from them. And that's what we did. We talked to other entrepreneurs, we asked them, you know, how do you do it? Like, what does it mean for you to be a good boss? And um, and we bought books, we read books, business books, and um, we noticed that a lot of the business advice that we were getting um, did not resonate with us, didn't feel intuitive. We tried a lot of the stuff out um, and it didn't work for us. And we felt like there was a very big lack of diversity in terms of leadership advice or, um, you know, leadership models that actually felt intuitive to us. So we decided to go out and talk to um, female entrepreneurs uh, to find out if there were other advice that we didn't come across yet. And um, we actually managed to find a couple of really inspiring female entrepreneurs from very, very different fields. Um, some of them are in AI, some, you know, one of them started a shoe company, one has a little think tank. So very different range of entrepreneurs. But um, for us, what they told us about 
how they were perceiving leadership in their own companies was so inspirational that we decided to write a book about this. And, um, and I guess one of the most important learnings for us in this process of writing this book, and actually um, the answer to the question that we asked in every single interview when we said, what would you have done differently if you would get the chance to start a business again, was the answer, I would invest a lot more time in getting to know myself. And that was really something that made us think. And, um, and the reason why all the women that we talked to said that was they said that their businesses or our businesses are an extension of ourselves. So the way we are with ourselves, we feel with ourselves is actually very much defining how we interact with others. Um, and by not knowing yourself, usually we fall into patterns that we just learned from others. And that had exactly happened to Naomi and me. We actually, by starting our own businesses and not having any other role models, we basically just um, fell into the pattern of, of being bosses that we learned in our own lives before. Like we imitated what bosses looked like for us and what we had learned bosses do in certain situations. So, um, so getting to know yourself so sounds like a good idea, but how do you do that? And um, for me personally, that meant two different ways um, that were simultaneously and also very much complementary for me. One was very painful. Actually, both of them were quite painful, but one was getting into a very structured feedback process with my employees because until then I just had my impression of how I wanted to be as a boss, but I had never actually asked my employees how they perceive me as a boss. So, so we started a feedback process as for, at Folk Days, which meant receiving and giving regular feedback at the beginning on every three months, we, I would sit together with every employee I work with and I would sit down and listen to them and have them tell me what they think about how I'm doing my job and what I could do better. And to be honest, at the beginning, there was a lot of negative feedback and I realized um, kind of very surprised that a lot of the feedback I received was very similar to the feedback I would have given my own bosses in my former life. So. That was very astonishing to me. And so through having this feedback process and kind of, you know, getting feedback over and over again, I actually managed to work on certain things because, you know, I actually had, you know, checks and balances a little bit, you know, I had, I had feedback from the outside and I could try out things and then, you know, see how it worked. So that was super, super helpful. And I'm still very, very thankful and deeply grateful to my employees for all the insights and from all the learnings I received from them. And the other, the other thing I did like parallel was um, I looked for a therapist and um, that therapist helped me understand a lot of things that I didn't know about myself because um, we are all social human beings, but the way that we live our social um, relations is something that is very early on defined in our lives. Usually that's something that we learn in our core family. And these are things that we don't really kind of rationalize. It's very intrinsic and it feels like almost an automatic response, but it's something that is actually formed by the way we grow up as a, as a kid. And, um, and the therapist helped me understand these aspects of myself that I always had perceived that, oh, that's just how I am and helped me learn how to take some of these things that I, thought were unchangeable because they were parts of myself and actually go a different way. So situations where there was a lot of pressure in the company or where I felt myself under a lot of pressure, I would usually always react in a very similar way I had learned to react when I was a child. And through like being able to recognizing that kind of behavior, I could kind of happens again, but I'd say right now I'm at a point where I sometimes feel that it comes and then I can, you know, actually rest and like just reflect and then actually decide to actively do something different. So both of these kind of tools or methods or whatever you might call it helped me very much understanding of who I am and also understand what are actually patterns that I learned through my business context, through my work before folk days, also at 
at folk days through the world, how you know leadership is perceived, but also what elements in myself are actually um, brought to the table and things that I could actively change. So um, I would love to share three three key learnings for me um, that I'm still trying to actively reflect every single day and also actively unlearn um, that are very much very deep inside of me, but I, I think I'm managing better and better to deal with them. So three things I try to actively unlearn every single day. The first one is that the belief that hard work is good work. I know a lot of entrepreneurs and I have to say most of us, we have this very strong notion that if we don't go beyond our own boundaries all the time, that if we don't go, as we call it more positively, the extra steps that we are not good entrepreneurs. That creates a situation where a lot of us are under a lot of pressure, where we are not very healthy, where there's not a lot of work-life balance, where we are not very relaxed. And I think that is a situation that has a very, very strong impact on every single company. And by actively unlearning this, I'm trying to every day create a situation where I'm not pressuring myself, but I'm, where I'm trying to go to a place where I can be good to myself. Because I've noticed that only if I create a work environment where I can be good to myself, I can also create a work environment where I can be good to others and where others can be good to themselves, where there's not a problem of burnout, where there's not a problem of people getting sick because you know they work too much and the pressure is just too high. So yeah, actually I still have situations where I want to thank my team and text them and say, you know, guys, thanks so much for your hard work. And I still have to, you know, kind of hold myself back and be like, okay, is it really hard work I want to thank them for? Or is it good work? Is it work that they find fulfilling that they enjoy and so on and so forth. So, you know, I think this kind of notion of hard work being good work is something that is so, you know, very deep inside of us. The second notion that I'm trying to actively unlearn every single day is that it is important to assert pressure to the, or that asserting pressure leads to better outcomes. And I think, I, I don't know, I mean, there's so much psychological research by now that external pressure doesn't create a situation where we actually create better results, but still it's something that seems so intrinsically in the, in the work ethic and in the, in the culture of so many companies I know. And I always had the problem that if I felt a lot of pressure myself, I would just pass it on to my employees. And that created a situation where we didn't have a very healthy company culture. So by recognizing myself that asserting pressure is not something I want to do to myself or to others, and that my goal is as an entrepreneur to create a work environment where people are rested, where they are happy, where they feel that there's trust in them, where they feel um, encouraged, where they feel good about themselves, and where they feel like they can be free and where they can make mistakes and where they can learn that is the kind of work environment I want to create because I know that all my employees, they come every single day with so much internal kind of motivation and so much intrinsic motivation that I want to create a space where they can live that and where not, not the pressure that I kind of assert from them from the outside makes them crumble. And the third um, kind of, yeah, I guess mantra or rule or whatever that I'm trying to actively unlearn every single day. And I think maybe that's something that is also very close to my heart because I suffered through that a lot is the um, assumption that in a workplace, you need professional distance. And for myself, I can say as much, um, I think feeling that kind of professional distance as an employee always made me feel like I couldn't be myself, that there wasn't a place for healthy stable relationships in a workplace because the relationships at work work differently from the ones I knew from my private life. And that made me pretty miserable and also made me feel like I couldn't be myself at work. And as a boss, I did actually the same thing. I created a work environment where people that worked for me didn't feel like they could be they themselves all the time. And I created a situation where I didn't really allow myself to go into meaningful relationships with my employees. And I did that because I had this notion in my head that if, you know, things go 
bad, then I might have to be, you know, really kind of hard with them and that it wouldn't be possible if, if I would be too close to them. But through work, working through this kind of notion, I'm now at a point where I can say, um, the best thing that can happen to you if you have something hard to say to somebody is having a good personal relationship with them. Because if I have something that, you know, is critical, if I have something that might not have gone well and I want to give feedback and I, I, I want people maybe to also change something about their behavior, if I come from a place where there's already a relationship where I know that they know I like them and I trust them and I appreciate their work, then I can tell them that in a very easy way. If I come from a place where there's already distrust and where they don't believe, like I see them for who they are, or if I don't see their strength, then that's something like, even if it's only a small feedback that might be negative, is something that will shake our relationship and maybe to a point where it's not repairable. So creating healthy relationships and relationships on a human basis that are that feel like, you know, you know, that we are connecting as human beings is something that is not only super, super helpful necessary in a business, but also it makes fun. Uh, it makes work a lot more fun because you actually, you know, can engage as a whole, whole human being and, and show yourself as the person you are. So um, I would love to read just a quick quote from our book. Um, before I hand over to Manu and maybe some of your questions. And um, it's from Jennifer Brandel. She's one of the founders of the Zebra movement in the US, which is a really amazing movement. Um, check it out if you haven't heard of it. Um, and she said something very smart when we interviewed her about um, leadership. She said, at the end of the day, everything that we build is a product of our own experience and our degree of sophistication about our own self-awareness of our shortcomings and our gifts. The leaders that I look up to are the ones who tend to be more self-aware. I can only be as good as I am in understanding myself. The quality of your relationship with yourself reflects the quality of your relationship with the people you're working with. And to end my little input, um, yeah, she's amazing and I'm very happy to be here. Wonderful. Lisa, thanks so much. Um, that was very, uh, very inspiring and very um, uh, unusual for, uh, for a business conference. And these are the things that we, that we want to bring on stage um, uh, much more. That's why the theme is Raise Your Sales. Uh, that's why we have a big track also of uh, uh, Raise, Raise Yourself. Um, and thank you very much for being so so open and vulnerable with us um, here. I um, I quickly love to um, or personal uh, or let's say I have so many so many questions. Um, <laughs> let me let me try to uh, try to uh, put this in the right in the right order. Um, uh, where are your, you on your journey now? Or let's put it that way. Um, uh, you started the journey. You said, okay, all this advice that I had, it doesn't feel right. Um, uh, I, I want to do something different. You experimented with uh, different things. Then you wrote a book. Where are you right now um, uh, on your journey? And um, because it really seems like you have evolved quite a bit over the course. Um, uh, would you write a different book now? Would you write the same book? <laughs> Um, uh, do the things in the book still apply? What is the, the current moment <laughs> in your journey? Um, actually, now I mean, I'm writing another book already, but it's, uh, this time it's not going to be a business book. Um, and I actually read through that chapter. I mean, there's actually a chapter in our book that's called How to Lead Yourself Before You Lead Others. And I read through it before I prepared for today. And um, I think a lot of the stuff we wrote in there, I would still, you know, kind of sign up for uh, 100%. Um, I think that if I compare it to eight years ago, like when I started Folk Days, or maybe even like five years ago when I was at the low point, maybe, I am now at a point where I'm, I would say we have a, 
a very trusting, a very healthy and good um, work culture. And that's always tricky because if bosses say that, that usually means that they don't have it. <laughs> but, I'm, <laughs> but I'm pretty convinced because I feel like um, I feel the difference and I know what we talk about and I know what people, you know, kind of like the decisions they take and the kind of discourse we have in our company, the honestness and the friendship that is existing now. And, um, but it's still something I would say that changes and that I'm still working on every single day. And as I said, like this unlearning of, of you know, things that just, you know, we bring from school even, or from university, or even from being an employee, or from just, you know, being in a certain work culture for a lot of time, for a lot of uh, time in our lives. It just, you know, shapes us very, very deep down. So I would say that probably this journey of uncovering all the things that I need to unlearn and relearning things that I want to learn, it's probably a journey that will take me all my life. But being at the point right now where I'm, where I'm happy and fulfilled at work is something that already feels like a big, um, like a big win. And I think the thing that I actively have to work on the hardest because it's something that is very very difficult for me to change is the first um the first mantra that i i noted down which is hard work is good work i still it's very hard for me to get to a place where i feel like i'm not exhausted <laughs> and where i'm not um where i'm actually good to myself maybe a little addition not only to have a company, but also have two small children, which are two and four. So that definitely makes it harder because um, I never really have time to just rest. And that made me realize that I needed to include my resting time in my work day. And that is something that seems, that is very hard for me because every time I'm trying to carve out time for myself, I feel guilty about it, which is very stupid, but I still do. And so, yeah, every single day I'm fighting that feeling of guilt and fighting to be better to myself and and having myself have some time to rest and actually mm. recover. I I, I um, went on YouTube and uh, watched a few of your talks and uh, some podcasts. Um, and you also had this notion there where you said, okay, uh, I got up um, uh, one day and I didn't, it, yeah, Sunday evening or Monday morning, wh whatever it was, it felt really done, just didn't didn't feel right. Um, and you, you're touching on that a little bit again now. Um, uh, would you say, in general, it's just between it's just a, just the two of us, right? Your employees are not listening. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> is that uh, would you say you you have this? Uh, you are getting up without or this hesitation or with uh, some with some joy. Yes. Are you looking forward um, to, I, I, to your work? Let's put it that way. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Are you looking forward to your work every day? I'm very much looking forward to work every day. Um, I think if I would have a little more time to rest, I could even enjoy it more. But I would say that 95% of what I'm doing every single day is stuff I love very much and that I enjoy very much. And um, uh, can, I, can I can I quickly? Why is that? So I'm looking for the secret ingredient. Mm -hmm. What 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 yeah. really changed? I mean, like really changed. I think I can be myself now. I can be myself with all the flaws I bring to the table, but also all the strength. And that is something I always felt very strange about talking talking about myself and saying that I'm good in things. You know, I also felt really bad about saying, you know, that I'm bad at things because I felt like, you know, I can't show any weaknesses, but feeling like I'm enough, you know, there are certain things I'm really good in and there are also certain things I'm not good at all in, and I can ask for help. I think that's something like just being, being enough with who I am and being okay with who I am. And that doesn't mean that I'm not working on certain things, but that means that I'm I'm okay with who I am and then I can start working on things, you know, that doesn't mean that not being perfect makes me feel that I'm not worth a lot. So 
feed like we call it like in our book we make a different differentiation between ego and confidence and i think i had in the past i had a lot of ego so situations where i would feel like i wanted to you know prove myself right all the time or where i didn't want to you know kind of give in because i felt like i was smarter or i had the better arguments or blah 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 you know so i feel like like actually recognizing this part of myself where I where it was just about get, getting kind of external validation and getting more reflected in these situations and at the same time building up confidence true confidence that is not that is not dependent on somebody telling me that I'm doing a good job that is not you know dependent on on revenue that is not dependent on um on applause but it's actually the feeling of i know that there are certain things i'm really good in and that's really exciting i think this kind of confidence and then living that like living the, the things i'm good in and also being open and say okay can you help me you know in certain aspects because i need help here i'm not like this is not something i'm good in i think this combination makes me makes me happy I think that's a that's a perfect lead up to my to my next question. Maybe also my 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 last one. Um, uh, the definition of success. We have um, we have spoken um, today about various various topics, uh, culture, etc. And also on the last uh, last fireside chat, um, uh, rethinking ownership. And um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially in the startup culture, we have a lot. This uh, success is defined by how how fast you are growing and how big you are growing, your your last valuation, all these things, um, uh, or maybe how rich you are, the car you drive, whatever. Um, uh, to me, the way you approach business seems to me you have a very different definition of success. What would your definition of success be? I mean, to be honest, by now, <laughs> I, I was, um, I had a very similar definition of success as you has, have just described it um, for a long time. And, um, and it was making me very miserable to always detach my own happiness to how well we were performing. So um, I guess, I mean, I was asking myself, like, what is, like, what, what would feel like success to me? Like as a, only me, like what would be the most success I can achieve for myself? And I got to a point where I said, that means that I'm happy every day, you know? And I said, as I said before, I mean, of course there are also ups and downs, but that I'm happy and excited to go to work and that I enjoy being there and that I like my employees a lot and that I love to hang out with them and work with them and create stuff. And the interesting thing is, when I dared to define my success in that way, create a place where I can be happy and others can be happy, the other success came, you know, kind of at the same time, which is looking back kind of crazy because, you know, this is like a fairy tale story, but it felt like the moment I stopped pushing for the one dimensional success and I actually started engaging in a success that made me happy, I could just be more open and look at other options and other things and, you know, solve solutions in our business model that seemed unsolvable for me because I just was always staying in the box. And yeah, so I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, it's not either or, but I think if we, if we manage to create a work environment where people can be happy and that is human centered and people centered, I, I do truly believe that success and I don't necessarily mean monetary. I just mean that you as a company have the feeling that you're doing a good job will come eventually. Lisa, time is up. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have to, we have to stop here. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll close with a few um, uh, sound bits uh, here um, from the audience. You sound like someone who definitely found out what's important in life and work. Kudos. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm really, really loving the personal touch in this talk. Yeah, thank you to especially you for opening up. Thanks so much. Um, this is so important. Resting time is usually something we just ignore. We should prioritize it, um, it more. Um, uh, Lisa, thank, thanks so much. Thanks for uh, coming on. Thanks for sharing this uh, very personal view. Um, uh, I can highly recommend the, uh, the book. Um, uh, check it out. Um, 
and uh, yeah, Lisa, thanks so much for uh, everything that you are doing and for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation and have fun. Thanks. <laughs>